Good morning, this is Shelby Law with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Wednesday, July 26, 2023. The fire potential impacts for the next couple of days are shown here. Uh, we have continuing mixed wet and dry thunderstorms over Utah today, although they'll be a little bit less with uh, not as wide coverage as we had yesterday. And then that coverage decreases even further for Thursday. Then into Friday, we shouldn't really have any thunderstorms uh, to speak of in the Great Basin. Uh, the other impact is the wind still quite windy across the Great Basin through the next couple of days. The main areas are over western Nevada, the central Idaho mountains into Wyoming. And then Thursday into Friday, we see the winds pick up across the southern portions of the Great Basin. So this wind is particularly troublesome because of the lightning that we've had in some of these areas where holdovers may be a concern. Yesterday, uh, here we're looking at the precip and lightning activity. We did have a fair amount of lightning across Utah and portions of east central Nevada. Uh, there were some showers associated with, with these storms for the most part, maybe a little bit drier here in Nevada. Great Basin fire activity for the past 24 hours is shown here. We did have 22 new fires for 16.9 acres, and our large fire growth was just under 1,500 acres. So definitely picking up some initial attack from uh, that lightning the last couple of days. Precipitation for the past 14 days is shown here. We can still see that drying trend across Idaho, over northwest Nevada, and even portions of southern Nevada and southeast Utah, um, with a little bit of that recent precipitation across the central Great Basin. Taking a look at our ERCs for southwest Idaho, those values are quite a bit above normal for the time of year, up at the 90th percentile. Um, backed off those highs just a little bit yesterday with some or the, the last couple of days with some higher relative humidities up there, but still pretty high um, and dry up there. And then across uh, as far southern Utah on the Arizona Strip, those values are also quite elevated for the time of year without that deep monsoon in place over the, over the southwest and, and the southern Great Basin. We see these values elevated and even hitting um, close to records for the time of year, which is still pretty high, about the 90th percentile there. This morning's satellite imagery shows a high pressure center, uh, really kind of over that four corners area, um, but we are shut off, becoming shut off from that moisture flow up into the Great Basin. So again, lingering thunderstorms today, decreasing uh, tomorrow and, and by Friday. Um, so still still pretty warm, but not the um, record breaking highs that we had earlier in the, in the weekend. So for this afternoon, we do have high risk issued for the East Central Idaho Mountains for the winds that will be uh, moving through there. Otherwise, no high risk in place. A closer look at these winds shows gusts up to 30, 35 miles an hour in East Central Idaho, also breezy along the Sierra front, and then gusty outflows with any storms that develop. Precipitation is expected for this afternoon, again, mainly over the higher elevations of Utah, um, where those thunderstorms should be accompanied by a little bit of uh, precip. On Thursday, we see a drier trend with the decreasing thunderstorm activity, still windy over the central Idaho mountains and western Nevada. So if we look again, a little bit breezier tomorrow over eastern Idaho, but a larger area of winds also further south into Utah and the Arizona Strip. Um, and then breezy along, right along the Sierra front. We do see decreased thunderstorm activity in Utah, um, but we see some thunderstorms still up into western Wyoming. And there, there's a possibility of some isolated storms right along our northern border. We'll keep a close eye on these to see if we need to add any high risk uh, triggers for, for any of that, but it should be pretty isolated. On Friday, thunderstorms should be, for the most part, out of the area, uh, but still breezy across the central Idaho mountains. Uh, dry atmosphere in place on by Friday again, near single-digit relative humidities across much many of the lower elevations across the geographic area, and still breezy over east central Idaho, western Nevada, and across southern Utah. The three-day precip totals are shown here. Still looking at mostly Idaho and up into or Utah and up into um, far eastern Idaho and western Wyoming for those thunderstorms, maybe an isolated storm or two up here in the central Idaho mountains. On Saturday, we'll start to see a return of monsoon moisture, maybe not during the day on Saturday, possibly overnight and more, more likely into Sunday, um, but kind of a, a dry, warm day on Saturday as the, the ridge begins to move a little bit closer. 
Then on Sunday is when we'll start to see more of that moisture moving up. Um, this is mainly going to be across the far southern Great Basin and into Utah um, on Sunday. Um, and then into Monday is where is what we'll start to see that moisture continue to move north and east through the Great Basin. Um, we'll keep a close eye on where these storms will actually develop, but it is mostly going to be over Utah on Monday. We see some of our PSAs turning back into the yellows and greens with that moisture returning. It does look like a pretty good um, monsoon surge at this point with um, higher precipitation amounts and a little bit more slower moving storms as we head into the first of next week. Uh, on Tuesday, again, that moisture continuing to move a little bit further north um, and west. We'll keep an eye on, on this um, pattern as it looks like right now some of that moisture is going to be moving into northern Nevada and up into Idaho. Um, so not really high confidence on when and where those storms will develop, but we'll be keeping an eye on it for early next week. Um, again, the seven-day totals here showing the deepening moisture as we head into the first part of next week, especially over the Arizona Strip and up into the higher elevations of Utah um, with some, with, again, some better chances of higher precip amounts um, as we head into the first of next week. The extended forecast for August 2nd through the 8th puts the bullseye of temperature of heat across the Pacific Northwest, but still hot everywhere in the basin. And then we'll see those above normal chances for precip again up into Idaho and, and northern portions of the Great Basin. So I think that that is that signal of the monsoonal moisture making a, a strong push up into the northern half of the basin as we head into the middle of the next work week. And that concludes today's fire potential briefing. Please check back tomorrow for the latest updates.